In this chapter, James' teaching is an expansion of what he's already presented. Three times already, James has mentioned the danger of being deceived. He mentions it in verse 16, 22, and 26. As a student of my Bible, I'm, I'm the type that when I'm reading a passage or a chapter, and when I'm going to preach through a book, I read through it dozens and dozens of times, underlining words I want to make sure I have clarity on, circling words in particular that are repeated. So here I am three times, and I'm just closing chapter 1, and there's only 27 verses, and three times he talks about the possibility of being deceived. He's saying it's possible to think you're living the Christian life when in actuality you're just fooling yourself. James has referred to the Bible as a mirror. And here one goes to the mirror to see a reflection of pure religion, and there he finds it. And James, as we've already seen, is an intensely practical Christian. He reduces everything into terms of practical daily life. So remember, he is a creative doer. Uh, he did not come to audit the course just to be a hearer, but to take the test. And his thoughts are on the day of graduation. The word religion, as I mentioned, is used three times in those two verses in two forms. Uh, Paul used this word to refer to what he was became, before he became a Christian. I need to make sure you heard what I just said. Paul used this word to define what he was before he became a Christian. In Acts chapter 26 and verse 5, he was speaking of his former life before he was converted. He was saying, I was an outwardly religious person. Where I've traveled in the last few days, two of the countries in particular are listed as two of the most hostile countries in the world toward Christianity. They are people there dying in the Christian church. They're being martyred, and they're being martyred by religious people, just like Saul of Tarsus was a Jew living in strict allegiance to Judaism and he was consenting to the death of Christians and all the while thinking he was doing the will of God. Josephus, writing in the early centuries as a church historian, a Jewish man, used the word religion to describe the worship in the temple at Jerusalem. By contrast, the word most commonly used in the New Testament, which is used in verse 27, is the word Eusebia. And this word speaks of genuine, God-honoring, God-pleasing worship. The basic meaning of the word Eusebius is godliness and holiness. And so there is a religion, if we could really define it, the lost world sees it and they say this. They don't know really what to say about you, whether you're born again or you're saved or you've converted, but they'll say something like this. Uh, yes, my neighbors uh, are very religious. And they may be defining that in the sense that come the Lord's day while they're just getting up, they see you pulling out of the driveway on your way to the house of God religiously. And they say they're religious. And then when somebody really gets to know someone closely, they may even go so far to say, I'll tell you one thing, if there's a real Christian out there, he or she is one of them. They're the real deal. Uh, they're godly people. I, I've seen them under the uh, microscope of character testing, and they, they passed the test. So this, this passage has been referred to as the test of true religion. It tests you in the area of conversation, how you talk, compassion, how you act, and conduct, how you live. Talking, acting, and doing. 